everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel, who's here to break down this weekend's conference championship slate. What's happening, Jim? I am all good, Greg. Pretty excited for this one. I think that uh, two pretty exciting games from a real football perspective. Hopefully, they wind up being pretty close, but a clash of styles for Tennessee versus Kansas City, and then hopefully, maybe we get to Aaron Rodgers to keep things close out in San Francisco. So, I'm excited to watch some football this weekend. How are you doing? I'm doing well, man. This weekend, I'm playing DFS. I was trying to set my lineup early, and I was doing it with my wife, because she, she's all into DFS now, which is a disaster for my household. <laughs> and uh, her team, I just compared our teams. Hers is better, and I can't have that, so I desperately need your help. So let's start at the quarterback position here, Jim. There's only four to choose from. Who's your guy? Yeah, I mean, I want Patrick Mahomes whenever I can get there, because he is amazing. I love the game environment there. I definitely want Patrick Mahomes, but... It's going to be hard to get there, given the guys like Derrick Henry, Devontae Adams, and Tyree Kill being as expensive as they are. So I'm okay spending down a bit and dropping down to Jimmy Garoppolo. He is the cheapest starter on this slate, and he's still a seven and a half point favorite. He is at home. He is not facing an elite pass defense, and that's all good. Now, with Garoppolo, there are definitely concerns about the volume here because, as you saw last week, once they got ahead, they just rode Tevin Coleman and Raheem Mostert. That could happen again this weekend. But if the touchdowns happen to break in Garoppolo's favor, he could pay off pretty easily despite not getting volume. And I think that is certainly attractive. So he allows you to pay up for guys like Devontae, like Derrick Henry, uh, like Tyreek Hill. I do like that quite a bit. So if I can get to Mahomes, I want to do so. But if it gets me upside elsewhere, I am okay dropping down, down to Garoppolo. I think that it's Mahomes tier one, Garoppolo tier two, then the two underdogs are in a third tier together. But if you need to save some salary, I am okay with doing so with Jimmy Garoppolo. All right, Jimmy G makes sense in this matchup against the Packers. If I can get up to Patrick Mahomes, I will. But it's really hard when you're pairing Derrick Henry and you want Aaron Jones in there to go up to Mahomes. So going down to Jimmy G, I feel kind of comfortable with it. I'm with you here uh, for the hurry for the hurry up for DFS and getting it done on Sunday. Let's move on to the running back position. Here you are. Out there breaking rules because of value play, Damian Williams is not, and yet he's back in your lineup on Sunday. Why is Damian Williams a must-play for you here this weekend? Because it's our show, our rules, Greg. We make up the rules here, and I'm making Damian Williams a value because, hey, he is the cheapest bell cow running back on this slate, so why not? He is $7,600, and I said the word bell cow with Damian. That is exactly what he was in the divisional round. He played every snap except for two, and there are three guys on this slate who fit that mold. You got Derrick Henry, Aaron Jones, Damian Williams. Williams is the cheapest of those three, and he is the only one in that group who is at home in favor. So I'll take that every single time I can get there. He had 12 carries and six targets last week. That is good on its face, but also three of those carries were inside the five yard line. He had four targets inside the red zone as well. And this chiefs offense under Andy Reid and Eric B gets their running backs, creative targets. We saw that with Williams on that uh, touchdown. He got last week. I want those targets. They carry a lot of value. So 12 carries, six targets is okay, but there's a lot of juice in that volume for Williams. I know he'll be on the field every play, so the matchup is just kind of okay. The Titans very good against the rush, as they showed last week, but I don't care about matchup. I want guys who are going to score points. Damian Williams is going to do that. He's going to get targets, and I think he is the best player on this slate, regardless of salary. I thought that last week, too. I think it again this time, so... Every time I can get to Damian Williams, I will do so. He is my number one priority at any position on this two-game slate. Without question, Damian Williams is one of my favorite plays as well because he's going to be on the field, well, as much as Derrick Henry, as much as Aaron Jones, and he's simply much cheaper than those guys. Put him in there, save some money. So it is a value play after all. And you're damn right, Jim. It's our rules, our show. We're going to do what we want anyway. And that, of course, includes putting Damian Williams in our lineups. Let's move on to the second running back here, Jim, and that brings us to Tevin Coleman. Now, I went back to Mostert in my initial lineup. You're going to Coleman who had a better game uh, than Mostert uh, during the divisional weekend game. And Mostert, I thought, might be sneaky in tournament games because everyone saw what Coleman did. They go with the hot hand, Coleman. But Mostert was battling a sickness. Like, why are we all getting off Raheem the Dream? I'm not totally off of him. I am still okay with going at him as well. But I think that the intriguing thing here and the valuable thing about Tevin Coleman is that even before Mostert had that injury in the fourth quarter, 
Tevin Coleman was still out carrying him. In the first three quarters of that game, Tevin Coleman had 17 carries, whereas Mostert had 12. And it wasn't as if the sickness was really holding Mostert back because he still was playing special teams. He was playing gunner late in that third quarter, recovered a fumble there. So if he's sick, as which is what he was saying, he's probably not going to be playing special teams that deep into the game. So to me, it kind of seemed like they were okay riding the hot hand, and Tevin Coleman was that hot hand, as he showed back on Saturday. I also like that Coleman got the second carry of that game. Matt Breda actually got the first and then basically disappeared from the planet for the next three quarters. Uh, but after him, it was Tevin Coleman getting a carry before Raheem Mostert. So if I had to pick one San Francisco running back, I would go with Coleman at $6,500 over Raheem Mostert. Now, like you said, they could just go back to Mostert. Maybe Mostert gets a carry and looks hot, and they just decide to ride the hot hand once again. So because of that, I am also okay going with Raheem Mostert at times at $5,800. But if I had to pick one guy in a lineup where I am assuming that the 49ers get out ahead and control the tempo of this game, I am going to go Tevin Coleman over Raheem Mostert. Now, if you're filling out a good number of lineups, you should get both because both these guys have paths to really good games. We know this team is stupid efficient from, an, from a rushing perspective. The Packers are pretty bad against the rush too. So, if I am doing 10 lineups, I want exposure to both these guys. But if I have just won, that guy will be Tevin Coleman, given the work he got early and often in that game against the Vikings. Tevin Coleman was valuable against the Vikings. Totally all those carries and outrushing Raheem Mostert, outcarrying Raheem Mostert and leading this 49ers backfield. But just as we were all surprised last weekend, it could happen again. Does anyone's guess what's going to happen in San Francisco? Because you know Kyle Shanahan's going to ride the hot hand, but you want to get it right. Get one of those Niners running backs in there, you will not regret it. Let's move on to the wide receiver position. Let's stay in San Francisco, where Debo Samuel comes to mind, Emmanuel Sanders comes to mind. Of course, it was Kendrick Bourne getting the job done uh, in the divisional weekend against Minnesota. You're going back to Emmanuel Sanders here this weekend against Green Bay. How come? Yeah, I talked about a Damian Williams is my favorite running back on the slate and favorite player at any position. But if we're looking just at wide receivers, my favorite guy is Emmanuel Sanders, just $5,500, which is is super cheap for someone with his role. Now, his role last week looked really bad, just two targets in that entire game. However, both those targets came within the first five plays. So in the scripted plays for that game, they were going to get Emmanuel Sanders the football, and he caught both those passes for 33 yards. So they were prioritizing Manny then, and they just got too far ahead and didn't throw the ball basically the entire second half, which is why Emmanuel Sanders essentially disappeared. If we look at this from a target share perspective in the games, George Kittle has been active. Emmanuel Sanders has 20% of the 49ers targets in those games, 33% of the deep targets. Those are both really good numbers for a guy who is $5,500. And it's hard to see... I know that the 49ers destroyed the Packers the first time they played, but it's not a given that they're going to roll once again this week. We should project more volume for Jimmy Garoppolo this time out. And if he gets more volume, that means more targets for Emmanuel Sanders. So Emmanuel Sanders, $5,500. He is cheaper than Debo Samuel, cheaper than George Kittle. And I like both those guys as well, despite the potential for this 49ers team to just run the ball a whole bunch. But if I'm choosing one guy in this 49ers offense, I want to be Emmanuel Sanders. He saves me a lot of salary, helps me get up to guys like Travis Kelsey if I want to get there, or like Tyreek Hill, and he should have a pretty solid role and be on the field quite a bit. So it didn't work out last week, but I'm going back to Manny once again. I just think the salary helps overcome the legitimate concerns around his workload. That's the key, right? Finding that value and making sure that the salary matches what we expect from that workload. I think it's possible. I think it's real. And Emmanuel Sanders was involved early. And the Green Bay Packers keep it close. We'll see. Emmanuel Sanders could be involved late. Sanders trying to go to the Super Bowl with the Niners. We'll see if Jimmy G, if the Emmanuel Sanders is the connection that we need on Sunday. One more wide receiver to get to here, Jim. And that brings us back to Kansas City, specifically Sammy Watkins. He hasn't done all that much. So why Watkins? Yeah, I think that the fact that he hasn't done all that much is the reason that we can go here because it's brought his salary all the way down to $5,200. And that's like, if you remember last year when Chris Conley uh, was with the Chiefs, that's kind of where he was. And if we were looking at a two-game slate in the best game environment on the slate with the most pass-happy team on the slate, and you had Chris Conley at $5,200, you'd probably take Chris Conley. So basically what you're doing is saying, would I use Chris Conley in this scenario? My answer is yes. So I'm going to use Sammy Watkins here in 2020 around $5,200 because, yeah, it's been bad, but he did have 76 yards last week on his two targets. That is the most yardage he has had since all the way back in week one. 
if we look at the games where all three guys have been healthy, Mahomes, Hill, and Watkins, in those games, Watkins has 14% of the team's targets. He has 22% of the deep targets. And he did have nine targets the first time this Chiefs team faced the Titans because their strength is not in their outside cornerbacks. So we could see a game where maybe Watkins is more of a focal point than this offense. Now, Tyreek Hill had 19 targets in that game. So clearly, if we can get there, we want to go there. But Watkins is 52, and he has a path to a big game on a team that I would expect to be the highest scoring team on this slate. That is really valuable for $5,200. And I think that when you detach the name from it, if you're giving me a wide receiver who will play a lot of snaps, at least get a couple of targets tied to Patrick Mahomes, my favorite environment on the slate, I'm going to take that. So if you have to cover your eyes and pretend it's not Sammy Watkins to, to click that name, I think that's totally okay. And I understand if you have to do so, but I am okay writing it once again here, even though it has burned us so many times in the recent past. Both in season long and in DFS, Sammy Watkins has burned us, but you're right with the Chris Conley example. But what I want to throw out at you that I was kind of putting in my lineups, would you rather have Sammy Watkins or Corey Davis this weekend? Yeah, I'd project Corey Davis to get roughly like 16 to 70 percent of the Titans targets. And when they throw three times, that's, you know, <laughs> about a half a target. So I'm going to go Sammy Watkins or over Corey Davis. I am also willing to consider Corey Davis because they probably will throw at least five times if I'm being all, all in all honesty here. Uh, but I think that Corey Davis is in consideration. Manny is in there as well. And then potentially Alan Lazard in Green Bay, assuming that that ankle issue gets healed up before Sunday. Lazard's someone I had in there, too, and I like how the, the joke was throwing it three times, but in actuality, in reality, they'll have to throw it five. I, I, I love that's how we, where we went to there, three to five. That's the Titans offense, folks. It's, it's Derrick Henry and nobody else. Sammy Watkins, the play over all these guys. One final player to get to, and it works out well, because you want to talk about the Titans not throwing the ball, and here we are, putting in a Titans tight end for a value reason. And I get it. Travis Kelsey's not a value. George Kittle's not a value. So your options are Jimmy Graham and Johnny Smith. So which one are you going with? Yeah, I'll go with Johnny here. And he's actually the Titans' leading target getter during the playoffs. He's tied, at least, uh, with five, which is abysmal but it's five targets hey we'll take that for sure and he so showed last week that he can come through on that volume two got that left cheek down he can get some yards after the catch so hey what do you know we'll go with john new smith fifty six hundred dollars He's been playing a lot of snaps, too, and I think that's pretty valuable for a tight end. And you know it'll be on the field. If we assume that this game goes the way bookmakers see it going, we're probably going to see Ryan Tannehill throw more than five times if we're being fully honest here. So we'll see more targets, and John o. Smith will be on the field when they decide to throw the football. So... I think that it makes sense. I do think that if I had to rank the two, I'd rank Johnny Smith over Corey Davis among the value pass catchers for the Titans. And Johnny is just, I think, $400 or $500 more than Corey Davis is for their slate. So I'll take Johnny for sure. But I'm also not opposed to just totally punting this position entirely, jumping down to guys like Jay Sternberger or Robert Tanyan on the Packers side because they did run a good number of routes last week. Uh, but I think that if you want a legitimate player who will play snaps and be involved in his offense, John U. Smith is your best route for doing so. $5,600 is not that expensive. Uh, so there are concerns around this Titans offense as far as never throwing, but you want to attack this Chiefs team in the middle of the field. John U. will do that. He is talented. So why not? We'll plug him in here at $5,600. Can't start these tight ends I've never heard of, Jim. That, that's just not something I'm going to do. But accurately, I, I like how Ryan Tannehill is now throwing more than five passes, which is good. Uh, Johnny Smith does run a lot of routes. He is on the field a lot. It's Jimmy Graham. But Johnny Smith, well, you know, scored a touchdown last week. Cheek was down, maybe. And maybe he'll get down one more time Sunday. Jim, we appreciate the time. Good luck this week. Let's win some cash. Looking forward to it, Greg. Thank you. I appreciate it. And we, I think we'll talk to you about the Pro Bowl again next week, which uh, is always a delight. So I'm looking forward to that for sure. And golf is coming. So get excited about that, man. I mean, always. Who, who can't be excited about talking about Jason Kokrak? The, the show has been wildly devoid of Jason Kokrak talk here. So we will amend that ill next week or right, very soon. So what can be better than that? We got a Bryson Brooks feud to talk about. Things are great. We're not there yet. We're not at the Pro Bowl yet. This week it's Conference Championship Sunday. And we're here to win some money over on FanDuel. So for Jim Sonis, I'm Greg Sussman. Good luck this weekend. Enjoy the games. And Jim and I will see you back here next week for more of the FanDuel Hurry Up.